Welcome back to Open Line. Talking about a major change to the the Musica Fountain on uh, Music Row. And we are happy to have with us Fountains of Musica Foundation. There are going to be fountains there, as we've been talking about. Uh, we have Andre LaCroire and Desmond Child. Um, all right, we have a couple of calls as well, and, and we're going to keep showing the video as, as we go along. But let's go to Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Hey, good evening, y'all. Hi, what's on your mind? Well, what's on my mind is this fountain. I remember back when it came out and they had it covered up. It's like Andre said, people went kind of bat nut crazy about it. And I thought it was kind of stupid. But I wanted to come to the opening, and my boss, he was sick. He couldn't come, but I had to work real late that night. And I drove by there, and it was around 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and the party was over, but I met a man there by the name of Alan. And I was standing there in my raggedy old blue jeans, and this man walks up to me, and I start talking about what's before me, and I was so awestruck and appreciative. And Alan was kind enough to walk around his piece of work with me and let me give him my opinion, what I was seeing, and how it was talking to me. Just a little old hillbilly opinion is what I told him. I don't know if he remembers me or not, but I also let him know that I was grateful for Athena, that I had not seen Athena yet, just pictures, but it took me till June of 2012 to see Athena. And I want you to tell you, uh, Alan, something for me, Andre. You, I want you to tell him that when I saw Athena, that I cried like I did when I saw Musica. And I appreciate uh, his artwork. I appreciate his gift. And I appreciate his love that he has shown my city because I'm a native. And it does reflect that neighborhood because I know that neighborhood very well. So uh, I can't wait to see the water. I hope I'm able to get out there. But yeah, I, all I can say is you tell your sweet husband that oh. I adore his work and I appreciate that night. It's one of the nights in my life I'll never forget. Thank wow, you so much. So sweet. <laughs> this is fantastic. I feel you like crying. Yeah, it's a great call. This is so great. Thank you. <laughs> You're gonna Thank ruin you. my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> So that was opening night. Your husband, yeah. the sculptor, was out there. I, you we see how he touched her, yeah. and that's that's really great. That's a beautiful yeah. story. Yeah, it's really lovely. That's so fantastic. And, and, that's, and Alan is so thrilled that the, that's getting finished yes, because really this is. was his vision all along. That's very. Exciting. And it was made for it. The, 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 that's why those, pe you know, there's bronze pieces that go down in a swirl because the water's supposed to splash on it and swirl down. So we're, we're very thrilled. And also, when the fountain's made, it's not deep at all because all the water's instantly recycled back in and it's just like this much yeah, water. There's, there's no pool. Um, it's just it's, it's levels of granite that in concentric circles that step about maybe two inches down one from the next. So there's no pool at all. It's just water sliding and cascading down. So no one's going to fall in with their car and go <laughs> deep down into, you know, some kind of, like, Titanic situation. That was a concern, <laughs> and I'm glad that we've addressed that. That's very hard. Right, let's go to uh, Matt, who I believe has a follow-up. Is that right, Matt? Yeah, it is. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, away from the, I'm away from the TV far away, but I had a follow-up of, um, uh, is there a physical address that I could send a donation to? Go on, sure. go on our site. It's well, Fountains of Music Foundation. Well, if you want to write a foundation. check, um, you can send an email at the website, and then we can we can send you the address in return. You can send the check to the. Or can oh, I go I ahead see. and say oh. the address? Yeah, say the address. Well, I think you can say the address. Oh, sure. Okay. You're going to have a line of people there tonight <laughs> with their checks in their okay, hand. Okay, great. It's actually it's housed at our gallery. The Fountains of Music Foundation is at our gallery on Charlotte Avenue, and it's four three zero four Charlotte Avenue, three seven two zero nine. And it's um, right near the Sylvan Park neighborhood, and it's in the next up-and-coming area. So come visit, bring your check in person. And all right, I want to now show the video. We can just show. We don't have to hear this. But talk again. I mean, it's interesting to me how deep it's going to be. Some of these details, the, the, the water, how it's going down those stairs and that kind of thing. When you're going over, when you're planning this, and you're talking to this incredibly accomplished, world-known um, design company or whatever you want they are called you know what again kind of stands out um, that we might not see just from the pictures well uh, go ahead well I see that these uh, curving waters towards the the 
the statue it, it it accentuates the circular motion of the of the figures and then we'll have these triumphant vertical uh, jets that are going up 60 feet sometimes and so we have a lot of variation in how it's going to be presented and the lighting also there's a mist at night that yeah, kind the of video doesn't show it, it doesn't much. show it but there's a mist uh, it, it floats over the rocks in the in the the horizontal surfaces that's right. and it sort of ties together all of the vertical pieces and then um, the other thing the video doesn't really show as much because it's you know computer generated but the there's a lot of movement in the water it looks like vertical straight lines but the, the water will undulate a little bit just as it goes up like that and then a lot of it will splash on the figures themselves especially those curved pieces and, and it's specifically designed so not one drop of water will land on a car and there's an anonymometer <laughs> No, we we guarantee no. that. Yes, there's really. an animal. Yeah. There, there's the mist. And so, uh, right, it's now that's, guaranteed. That last shot's an amazing shot. It just kind of from from above, it shows how huge it is. And I'm interested. So you're saying it's not going to be spraying everywhere? Yeah. No. It is, first of all, there's a wind sensor, and there's also a temperature control. If the waters are going to going to freeze, everything just dies down. Well, it'll run 365 days a year. There's enough yeah. warmth in the water to keep it from freezing. Oh, it it does. So it'll go it'll go all day every day. But if there's if the wind kicks up, it dies way yeah. down. And also during the, the main rush hour traffic, it's going to be in its most peaceful, passive right. um, you know, formations. Well and we can we can we can time it so that it can be calm for a while and then grow into a great crescendo. So you could if we decide to put it on the hour you know, people could come and know that they're going to get there at that moment. So it's, right. a, it's a it's a place to visit. There's going to be activity and something to go see every time you go. It'll be really a, a good feeling each time. So when you put this in line with other fountains around the world, how what what are how how will it how will it rate? How, oh, <laughs> where, where do you think this will be? Is, number is this, one. No, your okay. number one has to be yeah, number one. Number one fountain. It's going to be the number one fountain. There in the world. you go. There you go. Said and done. What is? What is? I guess. What are some of the similarities with other fountains around the world? That well, you, think you about. I mean, an here? iconic one is the Trevi fountains in Rome. I mean, how many times do tourists, if they go to Rome, they have to see this fountain? And so you go visit it. You you go back. You take your friends next time you take go. Take pictures. It, it, it's a. But it's also a, a a sense. There's so many different emotions that come with it when you get to watch moving water and you and it's mixed with sculpture like that one is. It, it, it's it's a magical experience. And for this, this again is a major artistic undertaking, which points out the, the, I guess the energy that is behind the artistic community here. The fact that you're going to do this with no taxpayer money, it's all private money, and that you can get this done and, and you feel like next year, 2017, yeah. Yeah. Are, are you thinking of other things or is this this is your focus. You're not thinking of other fountains and other places or well, anything there, like that. Well, there are these three fountains that we've, that we've described, and um, one of the parts that I wanted to say about the one that's the interactive children's fountain in Owen Bradley Park is that mist that he was talking about will be what's, that will be echoed in this park, and it, it'll be a, a mist that has not just straight jets of water, but little jewels of water that come up out of the mist. There's a picture of it on the bottom right of the screen. So there's the other fountain in that in the park across. In the park. That's right. So yes. there's the sculpture of Owen Bradley and then the circular fountain next to it. And it can it also has different timing and pacing. And then it also can be turned that one can be turned off and then the the city the people can use it for a music venue or a poetry reading or a farmers market or whatever they the community feels like it wants that space to become. Um, but we did create the nonprofit the, the way it legally is structured. It could carry forward if Nashville wants other fountains that have a, either a public private partnership or, like, well, all of them are really ultimately because you work with all the departments. But that, that nonprofit can carry on and raise money for fountains anywhere in the city if anybody wants to keep it alive. And we, what about the economic impact of all of this? What are, what are your thoughts? The f fountains historically have created economic impact. I mean, they, they, you, people are attracted to places where there's movement, and when businesses are around, people want to be there. They, like you said, you want to sit outside and watch them, and you're drawn to it. It's, it's, it's beauty. People are drawn to beauty, and and activity brings all of those things. Economic, well, fo economic development follows. The fountains that they that Wet Design built in Dubai. Yeah. 
It, it's in a 30 acre lake and the, the fountains are nine acres. And everyone at the beginning said, this is a folly. How are you gonna do this in the middle of the desert? You shouldn't do this, this is a disaster. Well, as soon as the fountains were done, all of the properties around the fountain rose in value at tenfold tenfold up to 2.3 billion dollars <laughs> any any apartment that could have a view of the fountain just tripled in price or more and so we expect that well it has happened already after I, don't, I can't remember if we said this or not but after our press conference um, the, the the one of the buildings that's there leased four properties that look out over the fountain right after our press right. conference so, you know, there it already yeah. starts. which makes sense that it would be more valuable and they specifically asked to be facing the fountain yeah. I mean, now, and will there be lights at night? Is it going to every, be every lit. jet of water that you saw will have a light in it, and it'll be white. It'll be very um, elegant, and really beautiful lighting. And also, as as people come and to the visit, the sculpture will be lit too. Finally, well, <laughs> we we already have tour buses that go down Music Row, so this will be one, perhaps one of their stops, and this is going to have a a great economic impact because more people. More people will be using the restaurants and, and, and all the facilities that will be available. Yeah, it create, things like this are an attraction and they create traffic. Butch Spearden is the head and of our... Um, it's a destination. Yeah. So people, when they say, should we go to Nashville? Oh, they have those fountains there. That's great. Let's, let's go there. And then a hotel is booked, flights are booked, uh, restaurants are sold. I mean, it does have an economic impact when you have uh, a monument that's a tourist attraction. It just does. I mean, those pictures, yes, it would immediately become an iconic sort of uh, structure in, in our city. There, there's no doubt when you look at those pictures. Um, I, how, what sort of reaction have you gotten from the businesses? I'm sure they're overjoyed, but there's that very, very busy business corridor down there. Um, several establishments, you know, social establishments. What sort of reaction are you getting from them? What are sort you of talking about the restaurants? I am, yes. Well, we, I think it's going to bring know. a lot of people to their business and, and I think yes, they're going to be really happy about it. The main concern is that we'd be obstructing traffic to their businesses. Well, and we want to be really sensitive to that and careful because you don't want to interrupt somebody's business and have them lose money. I mean, nobody wants that. There will be some time that there's construction, but I really feel like... But there's construction there now. Right. And, lot, every, and, 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 and you... Gooder Fable, Gooder and Google you know, fiber just started being installed. Yeah, and tin roof is packed. So you know, there's people find a way to get to the hot places they want to go to, and we I mean, we think, think about Spain. I mean, think about Barcelona. There are fountains there. That's where people want to be. You can't they, go two there. blocks without another fountain. You meet your friend at the fountain. You know, in the that's evening, right. you walk around the fountain. You look at the lights. It's just, it draws people. So I think all that's going to help those businesses. And, uh, let's face it. With all of the apartment buildings that are being built there, that's an urban area now. Yeah. And urban areas need things like fountains. They need more green space, more parks to to balance bl balance it out so that the area is more livable and more desirable. All right, let's go to Bob. Hello, Bob. Oh, yeah, uh, great show. I like, I love the sculptures that he's doing. I love the idea. It's, it's very beautiful. Uh, it'll make uh, the area more of a green spot and less temperature. Uh, yeah, I, good point. I, I can't wait till it's done. Also, uh, uh, you could put some what they call uh, rainbow makers on some of those uh, skyliners for, during the summer. Get that going. I've been trying to get that going for years. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank for you. Thank you. So Bob supports the idea. He said more green space. Is that is that right? Will there be? You're, you're utilizing what's already there. Yeah, there's a great park there now. Right. There's already a beautiful yeah. park there, mm -hmm. and th this would add the fountain. Add the fountains, and then there all the you know, we would like to encourage expansion of the park, more more green space ar around it. And and also more fountains down up and down the row. I mean, Reba has gorgeous fountains in front of her building, with the deer drinking and everything. It's just so lovely. Oh no, they're horses, mm -hmm. right? They're yeah. horses, yeah. <laughs> right? right. And uh, they're bronze horses, and and uh, I, I think that adds a lot to a city. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back if you want to call. There's the number six one five seven three seven plus. 615-737-7587. Take a break. Be back right after this.